Hi, everybody. It's Kay Did. Welcome to Hear Our Voices. Today, we have Sarah as our guest, and she's also a, live, a person who lived through the homeless experience in New York City. So, Sarah, tell me about your experience and why, how did you end up going to PATH? Um, could you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so, hi, my name is Sarah. Um, basically, pretty much how I ended up in the shelter was, so like, you know, everybody goes through their family issues and just certain things happen where it didn't work out and I just found myself where I needed to be in the shelter. And it was just a very crazy experience because I'm not really, I could be honest and say I'm not used to um, being in a shelter. I've never experienced anything like this before. So it was very new to me and to see how like people treat you and just the way that the system tries to play people. It was very, very interesting, a very interesting experience for me, I would say. Okay, so give us a walk through on how you heard about PATH, how did you know, like, who told you to go to PATH, or did you already know about the whole social system in New York City? Um, basically, I had a, a, a prior friend that I used to be friends with. Um, she had, she was staying in the shelter, and she had went through PATH, and she had given me, like, a little bit of inside about PATH. So I kind of just knew about it from her. And so basically, like, from there, I was just like, okay, I know this place where they give you, like, immediate assistance because with PATH, they usually, it's not like, I noticed that it's not, like, anywhere, like, in the United States because they place you as soon as you go there. And not a lot of places in you know the United States in general do something like that okay that sounds cool lucky you had that person to tell you the information so yeah when they finally placed you right yeah. where like what borough did they place you in how was the experience at the shelter Okay, so basically, this is, I'm just going to give you guys like the just of as soon as you walk in type of thing. So like, as soon as you walk in, basically, I feel like they treat people like it's just weird. They have metal detectors as soon as you go in, which it was kind of weird because it's a family shelter. You, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a men's shelter. It's not like a women's shelter. They just it was just weird. So they, you have to go through the metal detectors, they search your bags, stuff like that. And then you, you have to wait online. And basically I would advise people if you are going to the shelter that you go extremely, extremely early. I would say like around six o'clock because if you get there any later, you won't finish basically the process of um, completing the steps, basically, because there's like uh, steps you have to go through in order to finish, you have to get interviewed. It's a whole process. And you, if you wanna be like one of the people that are able to finish that process so they don't send you somewhere for the night and you would have to come back to get placement, I would suggest you go really early because nobody really wants to deal with um, being there all day. So pretty much after that, you would, need everybody needs to get their you know their information they don't let you in um from what i've experienced previously they don't let you in if you don't have like your socials the birth certificates from what i've experienced so i noticed that you need all your basic information for you and your children especially if you're coming in with your partner because i know a lot of people come in with their partner and you have either have to be domesticated married or the child has to be on the birth, well, the, basically the biological parent of the child. So that's pretty much like the first thing they ask you, you know, information, like, why are you here? Basically in the front desk, they, and you have to write everything down, the last place that you stood at, 
um, why you can no longer be there, your information. And once you give that to them, they, they give you like a ticket number um, and you have to go to that floor. So what I noticed was that because when I went in, it's, it's a lot of people. And truth be told, the workers are, oh my gosh, the workers are very, very rude. And even if you could be the most nicest, sweetest person there, just, they'll treat you like you're just nothing. You get what I'm saying? Um, so basically after that, they straight up told me to, um, are you able to hear me? Yeah, keep talking. I'm listening. Okay, I'm putting yeah, on me. Okay. okay, cool. Um, basically, they straight up told me even when I was there, like they don't necessarily place people, um, like who are going through family situations. Like those are the people that they will like get tell them to go back back home those are the people that they deny because people really are going through situations where they could really not stay with their family and it was a serious family issue but I was told because it was a family issue that I wouldn't be approved um because of that but I kind of like brushed that off because I don't try to think negative and I knew God was gonna like help me get through the process so um, pretty much after that, um, because with my certain case, it was like a violence involved um, and things like that. They tend to look at uh, family issues that are like violent or domestic violence cases. They're the ones that they put as priority that will be able to stay in the shelter from what I've experienced and the information that I've gathered. Um, so basically I had to mention that to them, but so it was one person. And then after that one person that gathered the information, it was a second person. And he was basically asking me questions. Like they're going to ask you how many beds, how many, cause if you, it, let's say for example, you live with your mom, right. And it's just you and your mom and there's two bedrooms there. The fact that you even told them that there was two bedrooms there, they will automatically like cut you out for that because they feel like, Oh, she has, they have somewhere to stay they don't need to be here basically they're basically going to tell you you have to go to court and demand like for you basically to stay there and things like that so and i've even spoke to someone who had gotten denied because they had said that they um told them how many rooms was in there and they automatically just denied them because of that so really, I've learned when you're talking to these people and you're saying things, you cannot even say certain things for the simple fact is you won't get a place to stay if you say those things. And the only way you would eat, and if you get denied, you have to basically just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming just to have a place to stay. And a lot of people have jobs, so they're not um, able to just keep coming and keep coming, but they really don't care about that. And they just, they will have you keep coming and keep coming no matter what. So um, basically after that, they, um, when the last step is basically they send you downstairs and um, that's where your placement is. But trust me, when you go downstairs, it's gonna be like another three, four, five hours before you could even get placed. It's a long process. And when you do get placed, they don't ask you where your child goes to school. They don't ask you where your job is. They don't care about none of that. They specifically tell you, you're gonna be here, no ifs, ands, or buts. And I didn't have a choice where I was going. Um, fortunately, I was in Brooklyn. So that wasn't hard for me because I already knew the area of Brooklyn. I already lived in Brooklyn. So it was just more convenient for me, but I've seen people argue with the people at the desk, like, hey, can you please change this? You know, you're sending me to Staten Island and I, my, my, they, they will literally place people in Staten Island knowingly they work like in 
Brooklyn or the kids go to school in Brooklyn and then you have to be at the shelter at a certain time, which makes absolutely no sense in a way. So basically there was that, they give you like an option if they you wanna go get transported there, uh, which you have to stay longer for, or they just give you like a Metro card and you can go by yourself, which I chose to just go by myself just because that was just my preference. I didn't really want to be there any, uh, anymore. It was really a uncomfortable situation. There was a lot of uh, fighting, a lot of people arguing. I would say because of the workers who work there are just so rude and nasty, literally for no reason. So that was pretty much my experience going in. Um, I also forgot to mention when you do go, this is like, what could make or break you in my opinion um in the last step they tell you you need five years worth of income um worth of proof where you were living and that's that's where things get like a lot tricky for people because they tell you either you need a lease you need about three pieces of mail for over the five years which is outrageous to me because I don't know who there's some people but there's a lot of people that don't keep three pieces of utility utility bills or mail like that that they want for five years for each month of that year so that's where things that's where um my issue came from because I had got denied um the first time because of that um issue um so it was really hard gathering information just like that so I would let people know before going in that that's also what you need but you can also like I said you can ask someone to write a letter for you which is like what I did which is the most easiest thing to do which is get a letter from the person that you were staying with um hey they used to stay here they can't stay here anymore and that's just what it is that's just what it is and they'll probably eight times seven times out of ten they will call to verify and just tell that person that they said that you cannot stay there and that's just what it is like you basically they would sometimes I don't know if they did it to me but what they usually do is when they tell you that they're gonna send people to your home to like um, investigate the situation to see if you really don't have a bed to sleep and if you really can't stay there. And my advice to people is if that happens, just tell the person that's staying there, you cannot stay there and they cannot come in because that's the only way that it will, it's really like a process to the situation. You really have to like think through your steps, which is it sounds kind of crazy, but it's the truth. You really have to, that's what I learned and that's what helped me. And that's what helps me help people. Cause I would, I gave this information, a lot of like tips and tricks to handle the situation, which helped a lot of people um, that reached out to me because of my YouTube channel. And they reached out to me um, asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? What do I say? And I would literally just, I would take the time out of my day and just send paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs how to literally go about the situation to be approved. So, yeah. So, you said, like you said before, you have a YouTube channel. Do you want to put yeah. your name out there? What the YouTube channel name is? Um, I think it's, I, I can't believe I was saying I think, but it's Iconic's mother, usually because you know how sometimes on YouTube you could search her name and it won't pop up. Yeah, uh, that's the struggle with me. Um, so I'll put the description if you send me the link down below, yeah, and I could put it attached to this podcast, guys, so you can go and see her and her story and what she's up to lately. She has not put anything on there a lot recently, but we're gonna try to get her out there and get more subscribers and also tell more, probably in depth, of her story. Um, so I, I have a question from before we even get to the rest of your story. How much times have you got denied and what did you do to, to get through that process? Did you actually go through the fair hearing process or did you just start a new application? Um, basically, 
so okay this is how it went for me at first because I didn't mention the first time that I went to PATH before I even took PAP serious because I was going through things and I went to PAP actually to fill it out. I would say to like, give me a just of like, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to go through this situation? Because at the end of the day, I believe PAP is a good, like, even though it's fuck what's messed up, the situation and how people treat you and the process, it does help like to give you that extra push and to give you like to really see what the world is like and how people really are and how the system is to you like but um like I was saying um when I first went to PATH originally I had got denied that first time and which it was weird because when I had went um they had told me, they didn't even offer me a voucher during that time. They didn't even say, hey, we have these options. For some reason, the case manager had said to me, oh, we don't offer that. And you need to, we're going to be looking at your bank statements. You need to save money while you're here. Just all these things. And they didn't tell me anything like about a voucher. So I don't know really what that was about, but um, he ended up telling, um, calling us and saying we weren't eligible because of the five year, the proof, the proof of the five years. So that was the first time I had got denied. And I never went back because when I was filling out the situation, it was kind of like, okay, I got denied. Like, what what I had to figure out what I was going to do next and during that situation so I ended up staying back home again um for that situation and then other things started happening again which at that point I was like you know what I have to just do this shelter and just stick it out just if I got to keep going got to keep going so the first time that well the second time I ended up going which was the situation I had talked about previously, um, they had denied me um, because, like I was saying, the proof of, again, the where you were staying. I used to live in Florida, and that specific, like, proof um, that I um, needed to give, which I would also, disclaimer, when you go in, just say you only lived in one place because if you keep giving them all these addresses, it get that's what I didn't learn before. It gets very complicated and very um, a very sticky situation. So if you're able to put one address where you lived for five years, I would suggest you do do that. So when they had told me that I was denied, I had I personally, they didn't tell me about a fair hearing during that time. Um, my case manager, unfortunately, she was not, um, she was not attentive as she should have been, which I just want to let you know, a lot of case managers really do not care and they really won't tell you anything and they really won't do anything to help you. It's all, honestly, no matter what, it's all up to you. And that's what helped me because I just did it all up to me all up to me so I just went back and I redid the process again but this time where I um I corrected my mistake I ended up getting a letter from where I live um that Florida situation and that pretty much cleared up the whole situation and then when you get approved your case manager comes upstairs to tell you that you were approved and fortunately enough I was approved and so I only got denied twice and I never been through a fair hearing before. Okay. It's interesting that you said you need um proof of five years. Probably because you came from a different state. Because when I was there, no, I was no, all my I, life. Really? I only needed two years worth of proof. So that's very yeah. interesting on what yeah. different people say. Is I want to know if I call right now or whatever, would they tell me the right information? Because... I've never heard five years, but I'm not saying it didn't happen because you obviously it happened to you because you have to bring that information in. But it's weird that they'll have two different people have two different numbers for something to me, I would think yeah. so basic, you know? So that's very yeah. interesting how we can go through the same like same thing happening to us. Yeah. Yeah. Two different things. That's so weird. Yes, I know. Um, but just payment though, I've I've always lived in, in New York. 
that was, I went to Florida, like I said, because of the um, situations like that was going on with my family. But I've lived in New York and Brooklyn my whole entire life in Williamsburg, my whole entire life. So I'm not sure why they said five years, because even when I would speak to a lot of females that hit me up, they tell me as well, like they asked for five years. Um, how long ago were you in the shelter? I left the shelter 2018. Oh, that's not long. That was only like three years ago. Yeah. Wow. But I went, when I officially went to the shelter, it was 2000. 15 the first time and I think 2016 the other time because I had to do two different times I left the country but yeah it's not that long because I'm like I'm it's so interesting that you say I'm like five years I've never heard that number but I'm not saying it's not possible because obviously you went through that you know so I'm definitely gonna look it up and see what they say because oh man they just just has a lot of problems you know (laughs) it is a lot of problems like they don't even tell you like what you're about to like throw yourself into when you go into that situation a lot of these even with like your case in general like your public assistance case one person would say one thing another person would say another thing and it's just it's basically it's just disorganized very disorganized I definitely agree with that (laughs) so I have another I have a question for you it's like maybe a big question but maybe small questions if you had to change I would say two things about your process or your ordeal with this shelter. What would those questions, what would the answer be? Wow, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I don't want to be like, like sound cliche or anything, but I don't think I would have changed anything because when I went in there, I went straight in there and I had this mindset of, I need to get out of here. You got what I'm saying? I cannot be here because of everything that was going on. And I think that push, that just everything that was going on, like pushed me more and more and more to just just want to leave and leave. So I did everything that I could to just leave. I was nonstop looking at apartments like and that's what made me reconnect with YouTube again because I was already doing YouTube. If you go back, I put a lot of videos on private um due to like an old relationship. So I put a lot of my old videos on private, but I was already doing YouTube years ago. And just being in the shelter, when I seen what was going on, I'm like, you know what? I have to make this video because I'm pretty sure, I know there's a lot of families in New York that watch YouTube and they need this one information that nobody could, like nobody is telling anybody. So I was like, let me just post that. And then a lot of people, like I got a lot, a lot of feedback off of it. So. I just it, I would say that I would change things on their part, like for example, like how they can be better and how they can change. But I don't think I just I, I mean, like that's really a good question because like as I'm speaking, I'm trying to think like what would I change? Like what would I do? Maybe just like go in and be more prepared. Like I would have been more prepared, so I wouldn't have went through that little hiccup that I went through. Um, I would say that and just um, ignore a lot of things because I I seen a lot of things that was happening and I got into arguments <laughs> with a few people because I just couldn't like accept the way I was being treated. So maybe I would have just been a little more like nonchalant, I wish, and just ignored a lot of people during that situation. But I'm, I'm glad I'm out of it though. All right, we're gonna get to some other stuff now. So, why you tell us how it was in the shelter itself when you finally got there, your first day, if you can remember, how the workers treat you, how was your room, how much space did you have, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah, I'm laughing now because now that I think about it, it was, it was a lot. Like, so when I first came in, um. I can picture a lot in my brain, actually. When I first came in, what they do is I had gotten there like at 11 at night um, because I had came straight from the shelter. So I went straight there. So um, I went there. 
uh, and basically they they bring you to okay so some shelters let me just going right again. Some shelters, they are tier two shelters and they are hotel shelters. Tier two shelters are where you get your own key to the door, you get your own stove top, you get um, just those, it looks like a studio apartment, I would say. And hotel shelters are just hotels. Like you're, you're in a hotel, there's, there's only a microwave, a tiny fridge, and that's it. That's all you get. So when I went in, they, they um, asked for your information. They asked you to sign um, papers. They asked for a lot of things. Um, and basically you have to sign those documents and they're very, as well, they're very heavy on the baby sleeping with no, um, baby sleeping with no blankets and stuff in the crib. So they were like, they come in your room too without you like um like they just come in they like yeah. which was another issue <laughs> yeah. <They do. laughs> you know and it's crazy to me how somebody can just walk in your room like nothing like like as if you get no privacy it's bad enough that they check you when you come in times is that in the third like people like I understand why they do, but at the same time, people just because we came to the shelter doesn't mean we don't have lives. You got what I'm saying? Doesn't mean we don't deserve to either go out with our kids late or just 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 be outside. Like you got what I'm saying? Like it doesn't mean that you don't deserve to to just you know like like live. Be a person, <laughs> you know exactly. Yes. So it's just it's crazy to me. So um after you sign the papers they bring you up to your room um they kind of like go over um like basically the gist of it um no blankets in the bed um they come in like I would say four times a week to look through do your to see if it's clean or whatever and um they basically you got to do a sign in every night um which was whatever like I didn't agree with it but I have no choice but to agree with it um so basically I was the type of person because cleaning ladies still came um and they cleaned your room and stuff but I I if anybody knows me knows that I'm a private person so I would just like sometimes I would let them come in sometimes I won't just because in the hotel it's a rug so it's kind of hard to clean like one because you know you have kids and kids make messes especially when you're in a, like the hotel was tiny it was a one bed queen a one queen size bed hotel it wasn't like the queen size bed where oh my gosh you have large space so it's one of those where it's very tiny you're lucky my first <laughs> I was in the, when I was in the hotel, well, I, my last hotel, um, shelter was a hotel. I went to four different shelters in a matter of a yeah. year and like four months. Wow. And the one I stayed in for the longest was a tiny room. The room was tiny. I had my daughter's stroller. I had a TV, a desk, but I got a twin bed. It was not a queen <laughs> bed, a twin. And I'm big, wow. so I'm not skinny. So I'm in a twin bed. This whole you know what I think it is? You know what I think it is? I think, like I told you, what they do is they count beds, they count people, and because it was you and your daughter, they just think in their whatever brain that an adult should be sleeping on a, one adult should be sleeping on a twin size bed, which is not okay. You know what I'm exactly. saying? But that's what they're thinking in their brain. Like, they just think that they can do, like, things like that, and it's, it, it's just not okay. Like, the space that I was in, it, it's, it was three of us, but three of us and the, the way the room was structured like it's not like like I was saying it's not like a queen size where it's like you know you have that space no like I could barely move my body around in the room it was very very tight and it was also the baby's bed there too because they like you said they do they provide a, a, a did they provide a bed for your daughter and the first room we had at that hotel, every hotel I've been to, she got a crib because she was about, she wasn't two yet. When she was two, they changed our room to a bigger room. The room I was in, I want to oh. put the video on YouTube, but I haven't done it yet. The room was big compared to that. Oh. Room. Probably yeah. like two or three rooms in one. Yeah, and then, I didn't want to go yeah. with the first one I went to. I know exactly what you're talking about. They just, 
it's just crazy. And the fact that you have to just constantly move and move and move, that, that's, that's also a messed up thing about it. And um, basically, I had, oh my God, I don't even like saying it. So we have come to the end of this particular podcast. But as you can tell from the way it ended just abruptly like that, come back next week and figure out what she's trying to say and tell us the rest of her story. She has a good amount left to tell you and give you some insight about what's happening and what happened to her in the shelter. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you tell a friend and tell another friend to tell the world about this podcast. Um, We might be branching out to other things in the homeless sector. So we, if you have any ideas, any questions, any things like that, you could definitely go on Twitter and Instagram and inbox us. And we'll be happy to give out the information. If you're a person who used to be homeless and want to be interviewed on the podcast, we welcome you here. And also, we're going to have down below Sarah's YouTube channel that she has, like we talk about in the segment. Also, if you're a person who helps out homeless people and want to bring your expertise of what your job does, we would love to have that also on here to be able to help more people and get people off the streets and also out of shelters. You are important. You are amazing. And you should be treated as a person who matters. When you're in the shelter or even on the street, make sure you advocate for yourself to get better for you and your family. Thank you for coming to our podcast, Hear Our Voices, and I can't wait to hear from you next week. Also, if you have, we're trying to do a question of the week on Twitter. So if you have any questions that you think we should ask the masses and see what everybody's opinion is about, I would definitely, definitely like to hear what that could be. So you can inbox us on, well, the information is in the description. I have a lot of Twitter and Instagram accounts to remember, so I don't remember everything. But it's definitely going to be down below so you can get it. So thank you again for coming. See you next time.